a friend of yours has asked you to check on their cousin Meryl. They mentioned he was studying some ancient dwarven ruins, and your curiosity has led you to investigate. Coming upon the edge of the fissure, you see a large marble statue of a dwarven woman bound and holding a large set of chains taut. Peering over the edge, you can see various platforms suspended by the chains below. Behind the statue, stairs lead to large metal doors inset into the unyielding stone. They were bound shut by ornate purple rope, now cut and laying aside. This is the Dwarven Outpost, and I'm going to show you how I made it. Before we begin, I'm going to tell you about my friends, Seth Ian and Frankie Stein from Boltneck Possum Publishing. You see, Seth and Mr. Stein are writers, and they were kind enough to work with me in developing this small adventure set in a unique fantasy setting of their own creation. What's a story without some amazing concept art done by the one and only Frankie D? Just look at it. Wow. Wow, look at that. The source of inspiration triggers several ideas for me. These arches kind of look like the one scene in Lord of the Rings where the Fellowship is escaping the mines of Moria and getting shot at by goblin arrows. I think we're going to do something a bit special for the entrance, though. Really make this feel like a dwarven entrance. That's a very Tolkien-esque idea, but I love the concept of very elaborate and hidden entrances to dwarven structures and fortresses. Oh, and before I forget, if you want to follow along on this adventure module, and several more just like it, be sure to check out the link in the description for the twice-made, once-forgotten Kickstarter. To get a rough idea of proportions, I started mocking up the model in 10mm scale. Why 10mm scale? Well, I had a ton of fun with my medieval city build, but I decided to do another in this scale. The benefits are you can fit a lot more detail and content into a smaller footprint, save on storage space, and still look really good on camera. Plus, if I want to use it for D&D, I could just plop it down in the middle of the table, and my players have a lot of real estate to explore without swapping out other terrain and it just gives something visual yet unobtrusive for the players to look at. My go-to mock-up material is cardboard. I have tons of it. It's free and I can quickly tape sections together to get something reasonable. The size ended up being almost exactly one cubic foot, which is kind of neat. Let me know in the comments if you guys enjoy this concept, and I think I'll do more of these. I'll start a new series on cubed encounters. All right, with the proportions set up, let's dive into actually building this thing. A lot of our design elements are going to come straight out of the concept art from Frankie. These arches are gonna to be tough to scratch build over and over. So I went about designing them digitally and 3D printing them. For this, I pre-built some sections as a whole, which were resin printed, as well as printed off some individual sections, which print well on my FDM printer. I can then build them up with super glue where I need them once we scope out the rock faces a bit more. All the 3D designs I made during this build will be included in the Kickstarter as well, as well as all the sketches from Frankie D. And speaking of rock faces, we're gonna need some rocks. And you can absolutely go outside, grab some actual rocks or tree bark and use that for this step. But I wanted to test out some of this new PLA filament from Dramic. They sent me some review stock and I'm digging it so far. No print failures with it, no elephant foot, great adhesion. Now, once you have your actual rocks, whether they are printed or not, you can replicate them with a mold. And no, we're not going to get fancy here. Just using some aluminum foil to get an impression of the rocks, and then pouring some plaster of Paris into them and waiting for it to dry. The fact that we have plaster now lets us break these apart and get textures and new rock combinations, which is great. To get the actual landmass of the cliff, I'm resorting to some good old-fashioned XPS foam insulation. This is easy to cut with an old full utility knife and stacks to the desired height. I used construction adhesive to get it all to stick together and toothpicks between layers to keep it from moving while the glue dries. Once dry, we can come in and sculpt it with a nichrome wire cutter like this. Really trying to get some organic shapes going. Once I'm happy with the overall shape, I come in with a hot knife tool which lets me poke in and get some carved in details that I couldn't otherwise get with the previous cutter. I'll be using this to make some caverns in the cliffside for our dwarven outpost. 
These platforms I designed and printed are going to go at the very top and in the middle here, jutting out. I also take this time to carve up the XPS with my utility knife, getting lots of little jagged cuts into the foam to simulate crumbling striations in the sediment layers. If you don't have fancy tools, you can always use a flat-headed screwdriver to just brutally shank the XPS into submission until it looks like what you imagined. Hit that like button if you've ever shanked your XPS foam. If not, you're missing out. This was pretty therapeutic. I'm going to build up the opposing side of the ravine as well, but we're going to keep it separate for ease of working on it and attach it near the end. Once I've glued in some of my rocks in place, it's time to do a first pass of joint compound and gesso mix. Call this the NARB special, patent pending. I added in some cellulose fibers as well to bulk it up. You basically want to slather this on to cover most of the gaps in the XPS foam. And you can also use it to sculpt some of the interesting details. If you've covered up a little too much, you can come in with a wet brush and clean off the surfaces you want to reveal back. The plaster stays in a workable condition for about 30 to 40 minutes. Oh, it's already looking a lot like stone at this step. But let's keep going. To get a clean look on the sides and back where the diorama ends, I'll be covering it with chipboard, traced and cut out the profile of the cliff. Once painted black, this will give a good clean edge to our diorama. At this step, I start dry fitting my arches into their final place and cut out any of the plaster in XPS to make sure they fit snugly. Then once I'm happy with the position, I'm going to underpaint the caverns with black as they will be hard to reach once the arches go in. Now we can glue in the arches. Using super glue here is fine since most of the surface is covered in plaster or black paint. So there should be no reaction between the CA glue and the XPS foam. Now to make the arches blend into the rock face even more, I'm layering on yet more stone chunks, as well as a second plastering step with the NARB special. Nice. Let's talk statues. The Dwarven outpost is going to be held up by Frey the Selfless. A figure immortalized in marble standing at the top of the fissure with a set of massive chains holding up the features below. I naturally designed and digitally sculpted this figure in Oculus Medium in my VR headset. In this universe, dwarves have tusks, which is kind of cool, I think. Her dwarven tusks are emblazoned with gold and displayed towards the heavens in reverence, while bound hands pull the dwarven fortress from its encasement within the cliff. Okay, hold up. Damn it, I I'm reading this as I record this voiceover, and I realized I never painted her tusks gold. I'm going to go ahead and paint them now, and don't hound me in the comments about this. I, I make mistakes too. I'm only human. Sheesh. Now Frey is going to be going on this sort of pedestal, which I built from one of these arches, some pieces of chipboard, and some tiny pillars that I also 3D printed. I'm going to be embedding her into the cliff section at the top once we finish most of the rest of the outpost. So let's keep going. From here, I spray primed both sections in various shades of gray and brown and got ready to paint them. Using my airbrush, I experimented with some different color schemes, adding lots of shadows with black the further down we get. I attached the pedestal with the statue at this point and started working on the chain details. These are cheap costume jewelry chains that my wife donated to the cause. Just have to find the right thickness and Hold them in with some super glue. The top of the cliff got a dusting of black tile grout, secured in with PVA glue, and activated with some water. From there, a progressive layering of various sawdust flocks, foam flocks, and some static grass to give a rough, unkempt appearance. I also made some trees from scratch for this. Just some twisted wires for the armatures, with some of these leftover moss clumps from Zetardis which work well as N-scale branches in a way. And then I flocked them the same as the ground, minus the static grass. Working our way down, I added the second half of the cliff and blended it in with some more plaster and coarse gravel and more tile grout. This part is interesting. A mighty telescope branches off from its dais out of a window at the end of the room. It is pointed downwards towards the fissure. Looking through the telescope, one can see nothing but a woman's hoarse laughter and the straining of leather can be heard. 
little bits like this are very interesting to add. Now, accessible through the third floor, a bridge crisscrosses downwards into the darkness, endlessly. To represent this, I found a cool new way to use my FTM printer. I designed these 2D sections of the bridge and printed them out in thin layers, about two to three layers on my FTM printer. 0.1 millimeter layer height should be enough. These now make very flexible miniature bridges that can bend into the shape we want. I need to experiment with this technique more. I think I could have made them even thinner as they end up a bit thicker than I wanted. At this point, I wasn't too happy with the bland gray of the cliff face and wanted to add a splash of color. I took out some acrylic inks to add some red, purple, and yellow oxide to indicate the presence of some rare metals and ore deposits, and then dry brushed it up to a tan to unify the look. Finally, putting in the trees we made, I stabbed them into the XPS with PVA glue, then add some flocking around to blend the trunks in. Also added some bushes, made in a similar way to the trees, just no wire armatures. With the final dusting of green and yellow on the trees, I think we can finally take a breath, look at the whole thing, while we introduce our adventurers to the encounter. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out that Kickstarter linked in the description. We all worked really hard to bring you an interesting and immersive setting that you can really sink your teeth in. Cheers. Here's Johnny! Ow, my neck hurts. Ow. Ow.